beautiful Tauran friends, and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020. We're Taurus this month. We have three moons, three of them. One of them is in your sign. Not to mention we've got Mercury going retrograde in your opposite sign. So just across the street there in the energy of Scorpio, your ruling planet moving into the energy of Virgo. So you're going to get a little bit more picky and meticulous this month, but also highly creative, I think. So it's a busy month for sure. And as we truly do wrap up this month with this full moon being in Taurus, I'm hoping we've made some semblance of letting go of things this month, Taurus, that we really just don't need. So I'll tell you all about that in just a second. This month in the Eat and Greets, we've got some good people coming over. It's not like we've had like bad people before, but we've got just more of the tribe, more of the astrology community coming to visit. Jessica Lignato will be here. Basil Farrington will be here. Melissa Lafara, Sarah D. Haven, Julio will be here. Natai, um, Shakira Taborn will be here as well. So it is a busy month. Oh, Shane M. Nyngard will be here as well. So I'm looking forward to just bringing you more friends from the community, more teachers, more information, more experiences. And now if you want to watch the Eat and Greets absolutely ad-free, you can join me over and become a patron on Patreon. And uh, there's a link in the description box down below so you can get signed up for that. Watch them ad-free. Of course, you can still watch them for absolutely free over here on YouTube as well. So I'm just working on some things. I'll keep you posted on how they continue to grow and definitely how Patreon continues to grow as well. All right, Taurus, enough of that housekeeping. Let's get on in here. Right at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon happening in Aries. So just right next door to you in the 12th house space. The full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. And in the energy of Aries, we're looking at things that have to do with the identity, the strategy, how you're going about doing things. Now in the 12th house, this is a hidden house. This is quiet. It's the things that we can't see, things that are here that maybe we can't even see sometimes until they manifest. It's projects that you're working on behind the scenes. So a full moon here gives me this indicator that perhaps you're bringing something to a close or you're needing to make an adjustment, maybe on a project, maybe on your meditation, maybe on how much actual downtime you're allowing yourself to take, Taurus. I mean, what are you doing? How are you caring for yourself these days? Are you getting enough sleep? Uranus is in your sign. It's been very, very busy. Are you sleeping? Are you eating well? Are you caring for yourself? How is your spiritual fitness? These are great questions to ask as this full moon blows through here because not only is it a full moon in Aries in that 12th house but the ruling planet of this full moon is also retrograde so truly taking a nice abundant re-look at over here I think is really good but also bringing in the action and the attitude of Aries. Aries wants to be first. Aries wants to win. It's an I energy so take care of your I, me, in this 12th house space so that you know you're good and healthy as these energies begin to move forward, which this month they are. Many of the planets are coming out of retrograde so slowly but surely we're creeping life forward. But when the dam breaks open, you want to make sure that you're in tip-top health and shape, okay? Now, I do think that the full moon in the 12th could also bring someone back or a project back into your life for you to reconsider or re-engage with in some way. On the second, we've got Venus, your ruling planet, moving into the energy of Virgo. This lights up the fifth house space. Very playful, very creative. I absolutely do believe if you are and you have been connecting, I think that Venus still, even in COVID times, even in shutdown times, has this energy and this vibe of bringing about new experiences, new financial interactions that are a risk, that are exciting, that feel like they're true love, they're creative, they're joyful, they're playful, right? I think it also has... Um, a leg of bringing in a person into your life. Somebody that you just really love, you really enjoy. It could be deepening the connection that you have with children or people in your life, these projects, these hobbies, these things that you just really have a great love for. But when Venus gets into Virgo here, she's not her most comfortable. Um, so what we're gonna have is finding you being a little bit more nitpicky, a little bit more meticulous about the details, discerning if this is good for your life, if it's not, what's the real priority? And joy is the priority right? Joy is the priority. Creative, creating, the children are the priority right now. So as you're going back through and you're doing this discernment to the details, look for that. Don't take it to the the low vibe version of Venus in Virgo where you can just be nitpicky and so critical of other people. Nobody's ever perfect enough. So how could you ever be with anybody? That will really kind of block the blessing. But at the same time, I will tell you, if 
You've been interacting with something or someone from a job to another human being that is just sucking the life out of you. This may be a good time to let that Venus and Virgo show you that the details of this relationship are not stacking up to what you need to really be nourished, okay? On the fourth, we see Pluto coming direct after having been in a nap for four months. Now he's going to unwind and start to, start to stretch and wake up in your ninth house space. So publishing, marketing, broadcasting, the way that anything that expands the way you teach, share information, you believe in your faith, your ideals, any of these things, Pluto's been working and tearing them down, right? He's been going back through the structures here. He's been going back through... Um, connections that you've had here in this retrograde, letting you see why some of them need to die off so that you can move forward. So as Pluto comes out of retrograde here in this ninth house space, I think you find yourself a little bit refreshed, a little bit re, um, reinvigorated. I think you find yourself transformed in the public stage where we see you. This could even be in a court case or something that you're doing. What has happened and now it's existing in a different form. And you may get to see how that works and that plays out moving forward. I love it if you're writing a book, publishing a YouTube channel, any of that kind of stuff. It's almost like the Pluto retrograde would have given you time to either realize that you need to do that or given you kind of this transformation of belief. It's like your I think I can is really on right now. And you're able to move that forward. So fresh ideas are available because Pluto has definitely destructed and cleared out some space for you. On the 13th, Mercury is going to go retrograde in the energy of Scorpio at 12 degrees. So lighting up the seventh house space just across the street over here to the west. So what we see here during this retrograde in the seventh house is first of all, it starts in Scorpio and then by the end of the month backs up into Libra. So your seventh and your sixth houses will receive this retrograde. Okay. So as Mercury is retrograding here in Scorpio and going through your relationship zone, your seventh house, conscious, chosen, one-on-one, -on -one, purposeful relationships. You may be re-looking at business partnerships. You may very much so be re-looking at connections that you have um, with your money because Mercury in the general rules the second house where Gemini lives. So connections that you have financially to different people and you may be going back over them. You're observing the way that it makes money and for somebody I'm seeing this, it's like, ah, I don't even like this word, funnels. Like if you do a sales funnel or you do something like that or whatever you do in business, it's like you're going back over it because you're getting into the nitty gritty of how does this work? It's not the details. It's literally how does this process work? So if this is something you're also bringing into your own life where you're like in relation to what I'm doing, how does this work? In my relationships, how does this work? There could also be that energy existing and floating around. Now I give Scorpio the street credit Deserves. It is ruled by Plutonian energy as well. Pluto is direct now. So truly in your relationships, if there's not something grounding in your belief system, if there's not something that grounds you and makes you feel like the relationships that you're connected to can help you expand and you can help them expand, you may be looking at how you can make that happen and or how you need to make those adjustments. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening at 24 degrees of Libra. So this is down in the sixth house for you. So a new moon in the sixth house, you're going to plant your seeds of intention here. Plant your seeds of intention to begin something new. What would you like to see? What do you like to bring into your life in your daily routine, sixth house, your schedule, in your health, in your mental health and wellness? This is a time with Venus and Virgo, who's also the natural ruler of that sixth house, to look at how can you really be of service in your life, service to your life, service to other people, service to your health. I mean, with Mercury retrograde and Scorpio as well, Scorpio being a natural eighth house kind of energy, Pluto being a natural eighth house kind of energy. I think at this new moon as well, Taurus, a question you can ask yourself is in your daily routine, what do you need to detox? What needs to go? Taurins, God bless us, man. We are acquirers, right? Like we will hold on to things and we acquire things. And so what can you let go of? What can you drop down and say, okay, I don't need that anymore. I don't need to keep that. I can let that go. And I'll actually be able to expand Pluto direct a lot more if I set this down or if I let this go. So that may be a really great energy. And in the sixth house, I truly do think about health as well. Like, what are you worrying about? What are you thinking about so much um, in your physical body, Taurus? Is there something, is there a weight that needs to let go? Is there weight that needs to come on? What's happening there?
On the 22nd, the sun joins Mercury in Scorpio in that seventh house. So you now you have light, heat, life, and vitality. But truly, while the sun's got you motivated to do relationships, that Mercury energy's got you motivated to review what you're doing in those relationships. So the sun here, though, is bringing a, a brimming of significant relationships that can move and come into your life. And you are genuinely motivated within them. And I absolutely love that. So make those new contacts. Make those connections. Go back to connect and see if they're the right fit and see what you can do and you can create going forward. On the 24th, Venus is going to actually try and Saturn. And I put this here because it is a great day actually to make any kind of deals or make any kind of long-term commitments. I have no doubt with the sun happening here in the, in the seventh house, somebody's getting married. There's a marriage. There's somebody's becoming a new parent. You're taking on something that's going to be a part of a long-term kind of contract and commitment here. And that is a wonderful day and energy to be using. On the 27th, that Mercury retrograde moves from Scorpio back into the energy of Libra. So now it's down there in this sixth house space where we had this new moon. So truly, as it's here, Mer Mercury is going to take you deep. It's going to take you deep into your mind. It's going to take you deep into the way that you show up, the behaviors you have, the patterns that you have in your day-to-day -day life. And remember, this is a time where it's taking you deep because it wants you to see what you need to see to be free, to detox, to let go of so that you can move with your coworkers with ease. So you can do those projects with ease. So you can be in your health and in your body and your mind with a lot of ease. So Mercury retrograde too though, if you are a freelance person, this in the sixth house of independent freelance work, you could truly be going back over several things. So I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that happening absolutely at all or if you're having to review something that you saw at the beginning of the year and now it's like back on your table for sure. As we close out this month, we're going to have this full moon, the blue moon, in the energy of Taurus. So this is going to be lighting up your first house space. Now this moon is right there with Uranus. So this is an absolutely surprising moon, right? We need to end something, acknowledge something, or adjust something. But Taurus, what is it about you that you're ready to put down? Like you're not like kind of working up to it like you've been doing the detoxy things this month, but you're like, I'm done with this or I'm going to adjust this. I am going to fully make a correction and bring some closure to this thing. And maybe it's even something with you, Taurus. I think about this full moon energy and I think about Venus being in Virgo, right? It may just be something where you're like, I just don't feel like I have the joy and the play that I'd like to have. I've got too much going on. The world has changed outside of me and I've got to recalibrate to be able to fit into what this needs to look like and who I want to be seen as right? Who do you want to be seen as right now, Taurus? I think that's a great question at this particular full moon. I mean, it only happens once in a blue moon, and this is your blue moon time with that Uranian energy bringing some kind of beautiful surprise to your table in this next four weeks. So keep me posted on what that is and what that looks like for you. I look forward to uh, finding out all of that good judge from you, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you at the Astrology University Summit that is happening October 3rd and 4th. The summit is free, so come, listen to the speakers, engage with us, do some astrology learning. And if you'd like to get all of the speakers or listen to the recordings again, you can purchase the All Access Pass, but the summit in the live form itself is free. I will put a link in the description box so you can click there. On the 17th of October, I'll be heading over to Achuta Bhavas and be speaking in his speaker series, the Nightlight series. I'll be talking about astrologers and social media. So I look forward to seeing you in all of this, the eat and greets, the weeklies, just everything. All right, you guys, I love you. Bye.